there's a, there was a, a, a really interesting column in Dear Abby a few years ago in which she talked about the 10 characteristics or so of abusers. And um, she talked about, uh, you know, basically if, if your partner exhibits very many of these characteristics, you should get out. And one of the interesting things about the list is that it worked on a larger scale too. Um, does your uh, partner use violence in the context of a disagreement? Well, on a larger scale, what about cops? What about the military? Um, does your partner not allow you to leave during an argument? What about prisons? Um, does, does your partner have a history of prior abuse? Well, I think that most of the indigenous peoples on the planet would say that this culture has a prior history of abuse against them, of violence against them. I think also that the salmon would say so. I think the great ox would say so. I think that the passenger pigeons would say so. It's like the first written myth of this culture is Gilgamesh deforced in the plains and hillsides of Iraq. When you normally think about Iraq, is the first thing that you think of the uh, just cedar forest so thick that sunlight never touches the ground? That's what the, that's what Iraq was like before this culture got there some 6,000 years ago. The Near East was heavily forested. Greece was heavily forested. North Africa was heavily forested. And forests precede this culture and deserts dog its heels. It's, that's what it does. So a few years ago, I read this very interesting book called um, Why Does He Do That? Inside the Minds of Angry and Controlling Men by Lundy Bancroft. And in there, he talked about how he explodes a lot of the falsehoods that are associated with, with our concepts of, of how abusers work. That, for example, we think that abusers lose control and they just get violent. And what he said is, hmm, so when an abuser loses his temper, does he beat up his boss? Does he beat up a cop? No. And what that means is he really doesn't lose control because he's very exquisitely sensitive to those to whom he can inflict that violence and those to whom he should not. Uh, when he destroys things around us at the house, does he destroy his own things? Hmm. And so we can ask the same things. You know, we talk about corporations being really destructive, but do uh, corporations pollute their own uh, backyards? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, it comes there because the world is finite, but you know, they want to dump the toxic stuff into poor neighborhoods. And they're systematically uh, violent. In fact, I would say I would go beyond abusive to psychopathological. They have no sense of conscience. Um, you know, if, if they don't have a conscience about 90% of the large fish in the oceans are gone. There's dioxin in every mother's breast milk. I mean, at what point are we finally going to label this abusive? At what point are we finally going to label this really what it is and not just say, oh, it's just another thing that happened. And that's what happens in abusive relationships all along. Oh, you know, he hit me once. Oh, oh, hey, he hit me again. Oh, he's really jealous. Well, how do you? What 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 happens when you start to see the larger picture? And it's the same, of course, with the other cult, with the, the larger culture. When you look at the big picture, you see these patterns. How long do we put up with these patterns before we put a stop to it? So, who are the real terrorists, in your opinion? I think the real terrorists are living in the White House.